NTA2 Lagos Network Center, your reach out station. Thanks for joining us on News Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. My name is Ronke Kolawole. You're welcome. President Goodluck Jonathan is seeking the cooperation of the Senate towards the restoration of reductions made in respect of some capital projects provided for in the 2013 appropriation bill in order to promote national development. He made a request in a letter accompanying a new version of the categorized amendment budget proposal forwarded to the lawmakers for consideration. National Assembly correspondent Adam Sambo has details. President Jonathan's letter read on the floor by Senate President David Mark outlines in figures reductions made by the National Assembly in respect of some critical roads, rail, health, power and education projects provided for in the 2013 budget proposal. The president is also concerned about the drastic cut in the Shaw P budget proposal from 27 billion to 9 billion naira. This cut will have adverse effect or severely undermining our capacity to create the jobs needed for our teaming unemployed women and physically challenged citizens. President Jonathan also said the reductions made in respect of personnel costs across MDAs will make it difficult for government to meet its obligations to workers and therefore solicited for restoration with a view to maintaining industrial harmony. Meanwhile, the spokesman for the Senate, Senator Enaya Abaribi, has described as unfortunate, disturbing and uncalled for statements credited to the Minister of Finance that the government will shut down if the National Assembly fails to act in good time on the amendment budget proposal. We are not on a collision course. We are 
all interested in making sure that the budget as passed will be implemented and implemented in such a way that everybody within this country will get the benefit of why the budget was passed in the first place. In the meantime, as a mark of respect to the late Senator Pius Ewerido, the Senate adjourned Tuesday's plenary and also deferred the scheduled debate on the Constitution Amendment report by one week. A one-minute silence was observed in honor of the deceased, while a committee headed by Senator Suleiman Adoke from Nasarawa State was constituted to liaise with his family on burial plan. On burial plans. Some of the lawmakers signed the condolence register and bear their minds on their departed colleague. He was a young man, a very distinguished representative of his people, um, a very honest Nigerian. You saw the passion with which he presented this case, particularly on behalf of the Nigerian people. And I think it's a big loss to the National Assembly and indeed to democracy in this country. I'm going to ensure that uh, uh, his family uh, does not suffer any undue hardship and uh, whatever we can do to immortalize his name, surely we'll do that. He's quite an interesting guy to be with, honestly. We are really going to miss him. His understanding and grasp of issues was clearly above average. The Delta State has lost more because uh, he was quite promising for the future. And contributed a lot to the work of the Senate. For the first time, I don't have my bullet heart on my head. And that's to tell you the mood in which I am now. We'll take solace in the, the fact that God Almighty, who created Anata uh, Oredo, knew why he took him at this time. And I uh, hope that he rests in perfect peace. There is need for the National Assembly to review their work schedule because uh, their work is full of stress. The Senate resumes plenary on Wednesday. In Abuja, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Minister of Education Professor Rukaya Trofai says there has been no official response from the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, on the issue of strike. He said this while answering questions from journalists in Abuja. We don't have anything to say right now on uh, ASU strike because we know they are our colleagues. We discussed with them, we had a meeting, we made an offer as a government and we are expecting to hear from them. So up to now we are expecting to hear from them formally. Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission, NUC, Professor Julius Okoje, also agrees with the minister's position. Uh, the level of the quorum is that if I want to go on strike, I write to the individual that is involved. I don't want to hear in the public place that we're on strike. Ordinarily, we have no official response, report from them. They should write to us. The last time government went with us, we have been meeting regularly, I'm telling you, even on Sundays, about three weeks ago, there was an offer made by government to them. They said they were going to their neck. All we expect to them is to come back to us to tell us what the result is. ASU announced an indefinite strike Monday over alleged government's failure to fulfill part of the 2009 agreement. The Presidential Committee on Dialogue and Peaceful Reconciliation on Security Challenges in the North was in Meduguri in continuation of his visit to states affected by the lingering security challenges, assuring support of the peace effort of Governor Kashim Shatima. Correspondent Mohamed Goni reports that the committee led by its chairman we saw also the Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, Kabiru Tani Muturaki, was at the government house Meduguri to rub minds with Governor Kashim Shatima and other stakeholders. Greeting Governor Kashim Shatima on their mission, Chairman of the Committee, Barista Kabiru Tani Muturaki, said their visits to the front line states became necessary to interface with relevant stakeholders to enable them to give credible reports to the federal government. He used the forum to, on behalf of the committee, condole and sympathize with the government and people of Borno over the loss of lives and property, noting that no amount of compensation will make up for the loss. Barista Kabiru Turaki, however, stressed that the federal government and the committee appreciates in concrete terms the magnitude of the loss incurred and extends support to the victims. The chairman added that the committee was set up to, among other things, reach out to the insurgents with a view to finding a comprehensive and workable framework for peaceful resolution of the challenges, granting amnesty and work towards disarmament. 
He then attributed the success recorded in the peace process to the tireless effort of Governor Kashim Shetima and expressed optimism that peace will return to the state. The government and the other members of the society are there for them. To be given support in such a way and manner and excellency that they could begin to make productive use of whatever is left of their lives. Responding, Governor Kashim Shetima described their visit as timely noting that the committee holds not only the state at heart, but the entire region in the pursuit of genuine peace and reconciliation, describing the team as comprising of people of proven integrity. The committee was also at the show of Borno's palace, where he called for more federal presence in Borno in the face of the present-day realities. The show who Alaji Abubakar Ibn Umar Garbay El Kanemi also said, another way of tackling the insurgency is adopting the former system of administration where a village head or a blama was empowered to know the people who resides in his domain. Alaji Abubakar Ibn Umar Garboy also called for assistance of food items to the people of Borno as Bampa Habeas may not be peaceable this year. In Maiduguri, Mohamed Kweni, NTA News. Meanwhile, business activities in Maiduguri, the Borno state capital, is gradually picking up, following the security measures taken by government and some members of the community towards fighting insurgency. Correspondent Amadou Fidi, Amadou Fidi Akmadou, has a situation report. Borno State was once known as home of peace. The current security challenge facing the state, when that peace enjoyed for years, was snatched away from the people, turning their lives into a nightmare. However, the situation is now changing with the effort of government in declaring a state of emergency in the state which resulted into the deployment of more security agents and the cooperation of youth group known as civilian JTF towards fighting the insurgency that yielded positive results within the short period of its existence. A drive around the metropolis shows that human and commercial activities are gradually returning to normal. This is the Medugri Monday market. A couple of months ago, it could hardly be described as busy as it is now, judging by the number of people coming in and out of the market. So, sir, how can you describe the movement of people? Uh, yes, we thank God. Um, people, are, people, are moving, um, people are coming now, more than before. Uh, it's, for, it's about to... By God's grace, things are moving as it come to normal as it did before. As I'm seeing it now, I think it's a bit fair. People are moving around, conducting their affairs. Things are, security are a bit okay, as per as two, three months. I was <laughs> like, Alhamdulillah, I was like, I'm going to go to the house. 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 Some of the respondents attributed the relative peace being enjoined to the effort of youths assisting JTF in the arrest of insurgents in the state capital. In Medugri, Amina Fide Amadou, NTA News. Amina, thank you. To overcome the security challenges in the country, stakeholders are of the opinion that there is need to inculcate best practices among paramilitary agencies. This was the thrust of discussion at a one-day civicum sensitization workshop organized by the Minister of Interior and its agencies in Abuja. Correspondent Aliyo reports. The workshop is organized to improve service delivery, which is key to transforming the country to be one of the top 20 economies by year 2020. To achieve this objective, civil servants are urged to ensure quality service delivery in a timely, fair, honest, effective and transparent manner based upon the needs of citizens. There is a need for everybody to come up and ensure that services expected of them are delivered on time and qualitatively. If people don't challenge service failure, it will be very difficult for governments to come back and look at what we have done wrong or what its ministry has been doing over the time. Stakeholders say the workshop is long overdue considering the importance of the need for the ministry to key into the president's transformation agenda. Savicom, as it is, is to ensure that we sensitize our people. It's a service, it's a wake-up call for our people to deliver service. We want to appeal to all Nigerians that we are coming to them now with a different kind of transformation. We want them to see that this is a new breed federal fire service. The workshop is also advised Nigerians to always challenge service failure in order to enable the country realize its full potentials. It is now time to join Lagos Network Center for more on Nationwide. Vera is standing by. 
Thank you, Ronke, and a very warm welcome to Lagos. Governments at all levels have been advised to initiate programs and projects that will address poverty and create job opportunities in the country. This was the trust of the message of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Aminu Wazri Tambawa, at a forum in Lagos, of which Pius has the details. Pius has the details. Presented by Mr. Okoyemi Bamideli, a former commissioner for information in Lagos State. It focused on the role of legislature on economic, infrastructural, and ethical revolution in Nigeria. Efforts, he explained, have been made by successive governments to address some of the basic infrastructural needs of the country with little or no impact on their overall economy. The speaker believes that the consistently appropriate annual budget, coupled with other legislations that creates a conducive business environment, will fast track the growth of the economy. We in the legislature are becoming increasingly concerned about the over-celebration of input-oriented budget that does not incorporate a feedback mechanism for output and outcomes. And we believe that now, and we believe that now is the time to repress this error. Professor Akin Oyebode, a professor of international law and jurisprudence, University of Lagos in his submissions, urged lawmakers to be accountable and transparent, bearing in mind their role as representatives of the people. It is a call to duty by those who are in power, who are in office, to make sure that Nigeria gives uh, the necessary hope and uh, aspiration to the younger people. The three arms need to be so as to see how what they do to attack. This is of violence. That is just part of the issue of good governance. The distinguished management lecture attracted stakeholders in both the public and private sectors of the economy. In Lagos, Amechi Pius, NTA News. Members of the House Committee on Culture and Tourism have inspected facilities at the National Theatre Complex in Lagos. And the Pius in a report that an assessment visit to look at the concession and arrangement of the complex was also the issue. Led by its chairman, Honorable Ben Wanko, the committee members, after listening to step by step presentation of plans by the management of the National Theatre on its proposed upgrading, expressed delight at the laudable project. The committee members, afterwards, inspected facilities in and around the National Theatre. They could not hide their displeasure at the level of decay and dilapidation of most facilities. World over. It's no longer oil and gas thing. It's what you're able to conceive, the creativity, how you're able to carry the cultural spirit forward, and uh, while they're talking about various uh, uh, dimensions of a uh, transformation, we should be talking about tourism transformation in Nigeria. Over a period of 30 years, whoever invests here will continue to pay money to the coffers of the federal government for the benefit of the entire country. The upgrading of the National Theatre is to commence soon. And the general manager, Kabiri Yusuf, disclosed that no stone will be left unturned in its quest to actualizing the master plan of the National Theatre as well as have a world-class entertainment centre. This is uh, a new innovation. We should give it a shot. And uh, we hope it will succeed. The project is expected to be completed between 36 to 48 months. In Lagos, Ani Payos Ini, NTA News. Five books have been donated to the National Orientation Agency by the AES Excellence Club in Lagos. The authors, Dr. Aspet Ajago and Dr. Violet Arena, say the books are aimed at reviving the reading culture of Nigerians in order to build a better and developed nation. The report. The books centered on leadership, nation and character building, entrepreneurship, attitudinal change and self-development. The authors of the books say reading adds quality to life, empowerment, emancipation and unity. This they also say is an important reason for the circulation of sustainable intellectual gifts for national development. Donate books, meet people at their needs, carve, carve their needs, because secrets are repeat, the truth is what of it. Every secret you want to know about succeeding in life, you can only find in the book. The four key, the four components of a category factor, which I'm recommending for excellence in governance today. Number one, self-surrender. Number two, blind love. Number three, attention. 
number four action. The Director General of the National Orientation Agency, Mr. Mike O'Meri, who commended a kind gesture of the authors, noted that the books are encompassing and will be distributed through appropriate channels to facilitate reading. The decision or choice of the present administration to hinge our development and progress on change of attitude based on, on the application of values is not misplaced but in the right direction. A total of 1,100 books were donated by the authors under the auspices of the AES Excellence Club. The demise of late PDP chief team Dr. Wahab Dosumu is a great loss to the nation and the Federal Ministry of Works. Minister of State for Works Ambassador Bashi Yehuda said that this when he paid a candlelit visit on behalf of President Goodluck Jonathan to the family of the late former Minister of Works. The report. The minister who was in company of other delegates described the late Wahab Dosumu as a man of honor and integrity whose contribution to the growth of the ministry cannot be measured. He also noted that his death is a great loss to Nigeria. al Haji Wahab Dosumu will be remembered for three or four things. One, he is a distinguished Nigerian who has distinguished himself as a public servant, who has distinguished himself as a politician, who has distinguished himself in delivery of service to humanity. At the graveside, prayers were offered for the late Wahab Dosumu. The family of late Wahab Dosumu, represented by his brother, Alaji Moruf Dosumu, thanks the minister for the visit. It is more or less everything to us. And the people are the people that are seeing what he has done for the, for the populace. Late Wahab Dosumu died on 19th of June in USA after a brief illness. And that report wraps up our contribution from Lagos. Nationwide now continues with Ranke in Abuja. Vera, we thank you. The primate of all Nigeria, Anglican Communion, Most Reverend Nicholas Oko, has advised politicians to take security matters above mere politicking. The primate gave the advice at an interactive session with journalists in Abuja. Correspondent Edina Justice has the details. Reflecting on state of the nation's security, the primate said every Nigerian has a duty to report any threat to security, noting that without peace, there cannot be development. If we say that it doesn't concern us, all we do is to criticize, then we go nowhere. In this case, everybody must be a policeman. In other words, we must not play politics with our security. It's never done anywhere in any country. The primate, who spoke extensively on rape and capital punishment, agreed that those involved in heinous crimes should not be spared. He added that the teaching of morals should be encouraged. We want to appeal to our girls. And it's not to justify any, any crime at all. The, the tendency to expose, the tendency to appear uh, to glorify nudity, it's not part of our culture. But I want to appeal to the religious leaders that we should continue to teach wholesome uh, doctrine on uh, moral, uh, good moral behavior in the society. The, the law of capital punishment for those who really rightly deserve it should be enforced. On the state of emergency in the three states of the northeastern part of Nigeria, the primate agreed that the action of the federal government had paid off as peace is once again returning to those areas. From the Episcopal House, Abuja, Edina Justice, NTA News. Nigeria is at the verge of forging effective partnership to address the constraints militating against the full exploitation of the gains of tomato industry in the country. Governor, Central Bank of Nigeria, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, stated this at the Wounded Stakeholders Forum on partnering to build a competitive tomato industry in Nigeria. Ali Kabir reports. It is on record that Nigeria imports over 65,000 tons of processed tomato pests valued at over 11 billion naira annually due to lack of functional agricultural value chain system. This resulted in about 50% of the tomato produced in the country being lost due to lack of preservation, poor marketing, 
distribution and access to markets. The desire to develop implementation strategies to grow the tomato industry in Nigeria is what formed the decision of the workshop. We are hoping that um, the 50% you hear that we lose between the farm and the markets, that will no longer be the story. The yield per hectare will be comparable to what obtains elsewhere. And more importantly, is one of the tools of poverty uh, reduction. Stakeholders from financial and educational institutions, producers, processors, as well as suppliers are expected to brainstorm on how to explore strategies to guide policymakers to promote domestic industries towards self-sufficiency and global competition in tomato production. We want to be able to increase the yield. Too many of our rural dwellers are producing at levels that we're not comfortable with. In Abuja, Ali Kabir, NTA News. How to ensure sustained improvement in the nation's agricultural sector through funding to farmers at the grassroots is critical to the ongoing transformation of the sector. This was the view of experts at the fourth inaugural lecture of the Nasrawa State University Cafe. Uche Kwizu reports that the lecture was preceded by the matriculation of 2012-2013 students of the school's convocation square. The report. The theme of the lecture is farm production efficiency, the scale of success in agriculture. It decries the low pace of agricultural development in the country, which affects outputs. The objective of this inaugural lecture is to draw our attention to the following page. Do we really know what exactly to make